In today's lesson, we will be reviewing multiplication strategies. This is part one of two. You will need your half page we glued in our math journals and page 16 from your student workbook, which you can actually download and print out or just download and view with us during this lesson. We will be using a lot of terms today, so let's review a few of them. Finding factors of a number. The factors are the two numbers that are multiplied together to make up the product or the answer to the multiplication problem. 9 and 7 are two of the factors of 63. Let's find the factors of this number, 18. Remember, we can use factor rainbows to help us. We can go down the number line, 1 and 18 are factors that make up 18. 2 and 9 are also factor pairs that make up 18, and 3 and 6 makes up 18. So there are also factors of 18 too. But what about this number? List all the factors of 7. What kind of factor rainbow can you make there? What did you get? Comment with your factors for 7. How many did you come up with? Yeah! <laughs> Only one. Only 1 and 7 are the factors of 7 because there's no other way to make up 7 with multiplication. That means 7 is a prime number because it only has two factors, 1 and itself. What is a multiple then? What's the difference between a multiple and a factor? Well, a factor is one of the numbers that can be multiplied together to make up the answer or the product, like 5 and 4 are factors of 20 because they make up 20, but 20 itself is considered a multiple of 4 and a multiple of 5 because it's one of the numbers that can be made with a 4 or made with a 5. A multiple is the product of the multiplication prob problem. Here are some of the multiples of 5. See how all the multiples circled in yellow are the answers to the 5's facts? We can call these answers the multiples of 5 because 5 is one of the factors in all of these problems. The first five multiples of five are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You probably remember that we identified all the multiples of 12 on our hundreds chart and identified the patterns. We could list any of these numbers shaded in green because they are all multiples of 12. Two multiples of 12 could be 12 and 24 because 12 times one is 12 and 12 times two is 24. 12 is one of the factors in each of these problems, so we can consider 12 and 24 multiples of 12. In a way, finding multiples for a number is kind of like skip counting. It really is, isn't it? Because we're skip counting by 12s to get all the multiples of 12s. See? 12, 24, 36. What would come next? Now let's try another number. List some multiples for 19. Comment with your multiples for 19. One way we can try doing this is by multiplying 19 by any number to get a multiple of 19. I could do 1 times 19 and get 19, then 2 times 19, which is what? Comment with your answer. These are multiples because they are products, or the answers of the multiplication problems with 19 in them. On page 18 of your student workbook, you're going to see this multiplication table. The top black row across and the black column down represent the factors. I'm going to slide an index card over the table to show you all the zeros facts. Zero times zero is zero. Check out another multiple of zero like eight times zero is zero. What are all the multiples of zero? I hope you're saying zero, because that's right. The zero property of multiplication says that the product of any number and zero is always zero. Zero groups of three equals zero. Five groups of zero equals zero. Now I want you to find your math journal with the half page we glued in to write down a few examples for the zeros facts on the first line. We can write zero times n, which represents any number we'd want to put in there, equals zero. Add two more examples with real numbers replacing n to add on to this line. 
Now let's consider the multiples of one. So I slide my index card down to reveal the next row and column in our hundreds chart with the, the page in our student books. One times two is two. Here's another one. Five times one is five. For ones facts, we can use something called the identity property of multiplication, which says that the product of any number multiplied by one is that number. One group of six equals six. Eight groups of one equal eight. Notice what the ones fact arrays look like on the grid. They're just one straight line, either going across or going down, because they are one by six or eight by one. One way I like to think about the identity property of multiplication is to pretend that the number one is a long mirror. When a number, like eight, looks into the mirror, he sees himself. He sees eight staring back at him because eight times one is eight. Taking a look at our ones fact examples, we could write one times n equals n because we know that any number times one is that number. Write two more examples of the ones facts on this line with your notes. When I move my index card over and down, it reveals all the multiples of two. Check it out. Two times four is eight. We can do seven times two is 14. The multiples of two are doubles facts. To multiply any number by two, double it. See? We know that seven plus seven is 14. So two times seven is 14. 9 plus 9 is 18, it's doubled 9, so 9 times 2 is also 18. Back to our multiplication strategies notes. Times 2 are the doubles. We can write 2 times n is equal to n plus n to represent that double. Then give me two more examples to complete the row. We're going to stop there for today's notes and finish the rest in our next Number Corner video. But before you sign out, I want you to try solving this problem written by one of you. Emma made an array with stickers. She did four rows of four. How many stickers did she use to make her array?